Hi, my name is Sean Olson. This is a demonstration of a new wallworm tool called Carver. Carver was inspired by some tools in the Hammer level editor. Although inspired by the Carve tools in Hammer, Carver and wallworm is far more robust. We're going to give a demonstration of some of the features and functions. And if you have wallworm installed, you'll find a menu item here called wallworm Carver. And if you don't have it, it will prompt you to go and uh, purchase it because this is a commercial add-on. If you click yes, it'll take you to the page where you can buy it. It's very inexpensive. Once installed, that menu will launch the Carver utility, which is a long collection of uh, functions and buttons. And now we're going to demonstrate what some of these buttons do. In this first instance, we're going to take this purple box here. We're going to set this as the Carve. That's the object we want to keep, and we want to subtract some of these other objects. In this case, I'm going to subtract this corner hit carve and the function will have carved this object up by this object and if I move this you'll see that I still have this interior and this object is completely carved up. The reason that it didn't delete these is because you have more options in here than in the hammer version. If we want to actually delete the object we want to go over here and change some of these union options such as delete union the union is where the objects overlapped and I'll demonstrate it by clearing these carvers here and adding this piece to the carve list removing the original box and adding this box to the carver selection now that I have delete union I'm also going to hit delete carver so when it's done it's going to delete this piece here and hit carve now you'll see that that object has been deleted and this object has been cut by those objects. Now being able to keep or delete these is dependent on what you're trying to do. One reason you'd want to keep the interior is if you wanted the volume to represent a uh, brush based entity in a game and have it match the shape and contour of the original space. Now we're going to move on to another scenario here. In this case I have this block and I want these four objects that are inter intersecting it to carve it I'm going to clear the current list of carvers and carvees. I'm going to set this big green box as the carvee. And then I have to set all of these other boxes. And now here's something that's important. The order that you select the carver objects affects the way the object will be cut up. The object is cut up in the order of the objects that you selected. So I'm going to select these in the order that I want them to carve. And then I'm going to hit add selected to carvers. So this object is going to create slices on this object, then this object, then these two objects. If you actually select a uh, name here, the node that's represented will flash in the screen. You'll see that it briefly flashes. Hopefully that records well here. The same with the carvees, because you can have multiple of those as well. Also, if you right click the name, it will select that object instead of highlighting it. So we're actually now going to go down here and hit carve. And now you see that we have this object all carved up. We're going to move on to another scenario here. It's a little bit more complex shape. First we're going to clear our carvey and carver selection. I'm going to add this box here, the green box as the carvey. And I want to remove from it these outer boxes and then this uh, cylinder. and now I'm going to carve this out. We're going to move on to another scenario here. We're going to show you the difference between a couple settings using similar objects, actually identical objects. So we're going to clear these off and this time we have a cone instead of a cylinder. We're going to use that as the carver and we're going to carve uh, this box. And in this case we're just going to carve here. And the more complex your object is, the slower the carve can be. And you can see it's pretty crazy because of the number of sides. We're going to do the same thing with this object. Only this time we're going to change one of the settings.
This time we're going to choose an option that says delete outside nodes. So what this is going to do is take any of the pieces that result from this in case in this case over here it would have been all of these that are outside the interior and delete them when the function is done running. And here are the results. Some objects will have face or edges where we we don't want them. So there is a utility in here to help you clean up some of those automatically and then you may have to do some fine tuning later. In this case it's down here it's called fix coplanar. If I click this on this it's going to delete I can select multiple of these at once. It's going to in many cases just fix them. Select both of these However, you may find that you may have to change the uh, threshold here from 10 to another number like 14 or higher or lower, depending on the shape. And if it doesn't fix them, in the case of this one, it didn't fix it, you can clean something up like that by just simply selecting the object, going to the edge mode, selecting that edge, and hitting remove. If you're building these things for games, and these are going to be world geometry, you'll also want to go in and delete any vertices that are happen to be um, left at where the edges uh, intersected with the other existing edges. So you can do the same thing, select it and hit remove. Now we're going to move on to another feature in Carver. So we're going to clear all of these. I'm going to use this as the carvee and this as the carver. And this time, I'm going to carve this object by this one as it animates. So I've animated this box and it's going to make a cut at certain intervals across here. To do this, I want to change it to interval from now and I want it to do at intervals of one frame each and we're going to do a limit of 10. So now when we hit we're going to uncheck this delete outside nodes which is not allowed when you have a, an animated carve actually and we're going to hit carve and here are our results. So we're going to go to a couple other functions in here. I'm going to go to the make hollow function. If we click this on this object, it's going to go in through and, and make this object hollow. Now I can undo my action if I want to. I'm going to undo the make hollow. And this time I'm going to tell it not to um, delete the union. I'm going to keep the union. Let's go back to make hollow here. And this time, the interior is still there because I did not delete the union. And this is useful again if you want to take that interior and tie it to an entity. In Wallworm, this would be something like going to the brush entities and uh, saying that this is a whatever entity you need this to be and tying it to that if you want people to get hurt in there when they walk in there well now we have um, that option and that's why you, you might find keeping the uh, union instead of deleting it useful when you use the make hollow and carve because it will automatically match that shape. So we're going to go over here and do the same thing with this object except we're going to go ahead and delete the union and we're going to use the delete outside nodes this time and this time when we do it it will delete any of the nodes that are outside the uh, perimeter or not visible from the cut area internally and you see we're hollow there. Finally, we're going to use this more complex shape here to do a carve to make hollow. And I'm going to isolate the selection here. 
and this time we want to select the union and the results and this is another example of why you'd want to um, instead of delete the union uh, select it in a case like this making a volume of the shape of this carve would be a little bit difficult and uh, we're going to use delete outside and we're going to do this cart make selected hollow and it'll take a second here and when we have it selected by it's already selected here the interior of it is the union the current selection now and uh, if we move this you'll see that um, it's the uh, shape of the interior and this makes it easier again to automatically have volumes for brush entities automatically match the exact shape of your interiors of your carves now there are a few more options in carver uh, for example you can um, you can choose how to merge the results whether you want to group the resulting objects or combine them into single objects uh, there's also a few utility functions for example uh, if I select all of these objects here I can actually just combine them into a single editable poly you can use this for multiple things just to quickly it's like using attach only a, on a bunch of objects all at once and there's also this explode which is the reverse it automatically explodes them into uh, the elements of that object into their pieces and then this other uh, utility function will select planar objects so for example um, if I select all of these and hit select planar well there are none so it didn't change the selection however if I were to make a couple planes here and then select um, these objects it will always work on the current selection if there is a selection so if I hit select planar it's only going to select those two objects those are the two that are selected not this one because it wasn't part of the original test if I have no objects selected and hit select planar it will select from the entire scene any objects that are planar and this is here because some of the functions were necessary for uh, some of the calculations so I added it to the UI because you may find it useful uh, in certain circumstances my name is Sean Olson this has been a demonstration of the Carver tool hope it's been beneficial and educational feel free to get Carver at wallworm.com and always get the latest version of Wallworm at wallworm.com. Thank you and have a good day.